today I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous pumpkin. I have done a pumpkin pattern before and lots of people were asking how to make it bigger. So I have created this pattern and with this particular pattern you can make it as large or as small as you like. So I'll talk to you about how you can adapt this to make it to the size that you want. I am using this Debbie Bliss Cash Merino Aran which is absolutely beautiful. It comes in some really gorgeous just shades which I think um, will make some really really nice and different type of pumpkins. Um, I am going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook. You will also need a darning needle, a pair of scissors and some toy stuffing. As always I'll leave a link in the description box below for you of where you can find these things uh, but before we get started don't forget to click that subscribe button if you like my tutorials and also click the bell button to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. So for this particular tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the uh, main part of the pumpkin in this video and there will also be a separate video for this cord just here but I'll leave all the links in the description box below and I'll leave a little thing here when the time comes to do the second part of the tutorial. And then also for the, this demonstration I'm going to use this soft lilac colour for the actual pumpkin and I think this will make a beautiful, beautiful pumpkin. So first of all you want to create your slip knot and you want to leave a fairly long end because we're going to be using that um, to stitch up the pumpkin. So create your slip knot in whichever method you prefer and go ahead and insert your crochet hook. So to do the same size pumpkin as I've done here, we are going to start off by chaining 17. So grab the yarn and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Go ahead and chain 17 and then meet me back once you're ready. But if you are uh, wanting to make this larger, then just keep chaining until you get to roughly the height of how big you want your pumpkin to be. It is going to squash down a little bit so maybe take a third off that length um, but go ahead and chain as many as you like. But as I say for the size that I've done go ahead and chain 17. So here we are this is my chain of 17. I'm just going to grab this pumpkin here and you can see if I hold it up um, if you take about a third of the uh, of the chain off, that is kind of the size that your pumpkin is going to be. So here is my chain 17 and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, a double crochet into the back um, bumps of each of these uh, chains. So as you're looking at the chain here you can see the V's like this but if you turn it round you can see these back loops just here or the back bumps. There's many different names for lots of different crochet techniques but this is what we're meaning just here. I do have a separate video really going into depth into that so I'll leave that in the description box below. So we're going to go into the second chain from the hook so this um, loop on the hook doesn't count. This is the first chain and this is the second chain so we're just going to twist it round to find that back bump and we're going to do a double crochet. So a double crochet is a UK term, in the US this is known as single crochet. So go ahead and insert your hook, grab the yarn, pull it through and then yarn over, pull through. Into the next one, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through and then yarn over, pull through two and then work your way all along that chain until you get to the very end. So we will have done 16 stitches. So go ahead and pause the video, work your way along and meet me back once you're ready. So now we've created our first row, it's now ready to go on to row two and row two is a simple repeat over and over. So we want to add a bit of texture to our um, our pumpkin. So what we're going to do is create a ribbed stitch. So you want to go ahead and chain one and turn and this chain one isn't going to class as a stitch at all. So we're going to um, do a double crochet into the back loop of each stitch um, all along this row. 
So your very first stitch is going to be at the base of this chain one. So you want to go ahead and insert your hook into that back loop. So I'll just show you that. This is the chain, this is the top of the stitch. If you were going in normally, you would go through both of those stitches, but you can just go through that back loop and go ahead, grab the yarn, pull it through. You'll have two loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through two loops. So move across the next stitch under that back loop grab the yarn, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, and again into the back, grab the yarn, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, and you're just going to work your way all the way along until the very end of this row. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way to the end. Remember you're counting 16 stitches, not including that chain one, and meet me back once you are ready. So I've just finished that row. You'll notice that it kind of looks um, a little bit uh, strange, but once you add the next row, you'll start to see the ridge. Um, so we're just going to repeat row two again. We're going to chain one turn the work, that chain one does not class as a stitch, but we are going to go into the base of that chain one with a double crochet. So we're going to find that back loop and do a double crochet in there. Remember that's um, single in the US. And then just keep working along that row into the back loop. So because we are working into the back loop all the time on each row, that's what pushes the stitches um, forwards and backwards in order to create that beautiful textured look. So what you're actually going to do is you're, if you're doing the same size as me, you are going to do a total of 34 rows. And what that works out as is it works out at three times the length of the width of the project that you have. So if you are uh, doing a larger piece, then you just want to uh, measure how wide it is, and then you want to work until it's three times that measurement. So it's three times as high than it is wide. I'll show you a really easy way to measure that once I've built this. So go ahead, pause the video. I'm going to work a few more rows and then show you once my piece has finished and show you how to put it together. Okay, so this is my finished piece. This is actually 34 rows and I did say that I'd show you how to really easy measure how this is uh, three times the length of the width. And all you want to do is bring up one corner to the edge like this, that is a third. And then if you bring up this side again, that is another third. So if you're just working and you don't want to keep getting a tape measure out, then that's just a really, really easy way of doing it and just building your work until it gets to that point. So once you have um, finished, you want to leave a really long um, tail. So um, I kind of go a bit overboard with this, but I just leave it really, really long because we're going to use that to um, cinch in the top and the bottom and then pull that out. That'll probably be way too much, but I'd rather have more than not, not enough. And then this side is what we're going to do to actually connect one edge to the other. So go ahead and thread that up. So this is your um, very first tail end, um, and then we're gonna work up the sides. So I've just threaded up my needle. What you want to do is pull um, one end to the other, so technically the top to the bottom, and you're just going to do a nice simple stitch all the way along this edge. So you just want to hook under one stitch uh, from one side and then the other stitch from the other side, and just run all the way along. So just as you're working, make sure that it's staying nice and um, level from one side to the other. It doesn't matter if you miss a stitch, you can either go into every single stitch or every so often skip a stitch. But hopefully you've left a long enough tail to sew this all up. If, if not, it's not a problem to just snip off some more yarn and 
tie it on and add it but it just makes it a little bit easier if you just use the end so we're just coming up to the end just here what I like about using this bit as well is that it just saves in sewing in an extra end so when you get to the end make sure that you go inwards and then what you want to do is just weave your hook into the work and go down the seam just let it catch in um, the yarn and then you want to go back up the other way so just weave your needle inwards sorry I think I said hook before <laughs> so weave that backwards and then if you have enough you can go backwards again I'm just going to snip that off then what you want to do is turn this inside out and then you can see that that is uh, just nice and neat that way and we're going to thread up this end so I left a really really long end here and this is the fun part so what you want to do is starting of where this finishes you simply want to run along the edge and you want to go in and out of these stitches it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to do row by row you just want to go in and out what I would suggest is that you do about a needle length first pull that through and then just keep working your way round and pull it through So go ahead, pause the video, work your way round to the very beginning and then I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so I've worked my way all the way around. Now what I'm going to, going to do is just gently hold on um, to the beginning and then pull this piece of yarn just here. You'll notice it's going to cinch in this very centre circle. So just keep pulling. And then you want to make it so that the circle goes entirely shut. And then what I'm going to do is just take my needle and bring one side of the circle and attach it to the other just to really make that whole tie shut like so, so it's just really nice and tight now. You can do that as much as you want. If you plan on washing these, then obviously make sure that it's more secure. Then I'm going to leave this out just for one moment. So it's like a little bowl shape. I'm going to take my toy stuffing and pop it in. Like so. And then I'm going to take my needle and go all the way through, just put it through the toy stuffing. And then we're going to do exactly the same on this side that we did on the other. So just bring your needle over, doesn't matter that it's, you know, pulling slightly here, because it's going to go into the middle anyway. And then just weave your needle in and out along the edge doesn't have to be neat doesn't have to be specific just weaving it around so go ahead pause the video weave all the way around and I'll meet you back in just a moment okay so I've now gone all the way around and now I'm going to pull this and then cinch that closed and then you notice when you pull because it's connected from one side to the other it automatically pulls it in a little bit but I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before so I'm going to go across to the opposite side of the circle just to cinch this clo um, closed a little bit more so this bit here is going to be the top of the pumpkin and this is where we're going to attach the stem so there we go. If you want to cinch that pumpkin even more into the middle um, so that it 
is a little bit flatter, you can simply go back to the other side, draw it in, and then go back upwards again. You can play around with the stuffing, make sure that it's all nice and evenly distributed. And then what I'm going to do is just tie off this yarn. So pull it through, but not quite all the way. And then bring that all the way through. And then pull across the opposite side and snip off the yarn. Give a little squeeze. And that is your pumpkin ready for the stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the video link here and in the description box below um, to the tutorial of how to do this stem, which is actually an I-cord. And then you can come back to this video and I shall show you how to sew it on. So pause the video and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, so welcome back to this video if you've just popped across to the other one. I wanted to show you this before I went ahead and showed you the um, size of the stem for this particular project. If you are doing a larger pumpkin, obviously a really small thin cord wouldn't do for a bigger pumpkin. So what I would suggest that you do is do a really long cord and then you can fold it over and just sew it together and it makes a larger cord. You can either fold it over twice or three times depending on the size of pumpkin that you want and then you can attach it. But for this particular size pumpkin, you only want to go around three rows up or whatever you prefer um, in order for it to be the correct size. So I'm just going to undo mine here and then I'm going to go ahead and finish it off. So I'm just going to yarn over and pull through, chain one and snip off my yarn. You only need it long enough to sew in a little bit. So I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to just go straight through the centre of there. and snip that off and then I'm going to put my darning needle onto the tail and then I'm going to sew it onto the pumpkin so this is just super super easy you want to find the middle and thread your needle through from one side to the other pull it down and position it and then you just want to catch one of the stitches and pull that down and just keep doing that until you're happy with its position. So what I would do here is just grab a loop and then go back through to create a knot and then just simply push it through to the other side pull it tight snip it off and then because you've pulled it tight it will retract back into the work and there you have your stem for your pumpkin so there we go they are your crochet pumpkins I think they've turned out really really cute I would love to see your pumpkins and the different colours um, that you choose for yours. I, I love to see them in these kind of muted tones and also with different colour stems as well. So make sure that you tag me on Instagram and post on Facebook your photos. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos and I shall see you in my next video. Bye guys!